What's up you guys, it's Matt here. So in this video, I wanted to go over something that I wanted to talk about last week, but I couldn't. Um, so hopefully I get this out on Monday, if not on Tuesday or so, but um, I wanted to talk about the Capital One hack. That's something that I wanted to get out there. Obviously people beat me to the punch. Um, I really just wanted to talk about it because it's something that looks interesting um, because one, I'm a part of Capital One, um, not as much anymore. I believe I cut up my Quicksilver card or didn't cut it up, but just don't use it anymore. Um, so um, I was a part of that, having that information in Capital One. Um, I'm not truly a part of it. I didn't get an email or anything, but um, I did want to talk about it because it definitely is something of interest. Um, so I'll get into it in just a second. Before I start, make sure you hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. And remember that I'm doing a giveaway, which I'll get into at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around till then. So hacks are no joke. They're, they're no joke at all. You don't want to mess around with, with hacks. You want to make sure that all of your, your credit history and that nobody takes all of your information and using your account in every which way possible, spending money um, on your behalf without you even, you know, saying anything. Um, so it's just, it's just a bad situation to be in. And I don't want to be in that situation, especially someone who was a part of Capital One, but now is more of a part of Amex. And, you know, I'm more of like part of the Amex family kind of scared me. Obviously they have a large range of, you know, credit card customers that were affected. So, um, I'll get into all the details and also go into some ways that, you know, you can fix things, what you can do in order to help your own situation out. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. So Capital One announced Monday, last Monday, and now um, I know that I'm late to the party, but um, they announced last Monday that 100 million people um, had their personal information hacked. Um, that's always scary whenever a company releases that information. Now the company couldn't say if the, the information that was stolen was used for fraud, um, but they said it was unlikely. Now, whenever companies say some, some things like that um, and they don't actually give you a true answer, um, it kind of scares me a little bit. A lot of these things actually scare me. So if I say that a lot, it does scare me, especially someone who's a part of Capital One, who's had a card with Capital One for a long time. Um, one of my first cards that I've had was Capital One. So yeah, it's kind of scary. Um, also, they released that the hack happened on um, July 29th, which is, you know, Monday. Um, but then that's when they released the information. They didn't say that it happened, but the actual hack um, happened on July 19th. Now, I don't know why they waited so long. I guess they really wanted to get some numbers correct, but um, they did wait very, very long to to tell people to get this out to the public. Um, obviously, some people must have been affected and then, you know, had a bunch of cases to where people call in and say, hey, I, I you know, didn't do this or something like that. But they said it wasn't it wasn't for fraud. So I don't know why they waited so long. The good thing is Capital One is saying that they're offering credit monitoring for the next 10 years for people that were affected. So basically $125 value uh, for the people that were affected, um, which I don't know if that's a good thing. So a lot of people say that credit monitoring is not good. Experts say that you know it doesn't stop someone from taking out a loan on your name. And that's not a good thing. You can monitor your credit and understand, hey, you know, someone's using my information, but someone is actually using your information. So no matter what, you can monitor it all you want. It's like me looking out my window while you see someone take an old lady's purse or something like that. I'm monitoring it, but I'm up in my window. I can't do anything about it. That, that type of thing. I guess that's a good um, analogy. So one thing that they're telling you is that um, be on your toes with all this information. Um, they're going to be, I guess they already did release a lot of information. I didn't get anything, so I guess I wasn't affected. Um, but they said that don't really give out any details over the phone. If somebody calls you and says, hey, I'm from Capital One, your, your um, information was stolen, let me get your social security number. It's a red flag. Don't do it. 
Um, there are some people that may do it, but just don't do it. Um, it, it's just not what you want to do. And I understand it is a scary situation. And when you get calls like that, whether it's FBI calls or Capital One calls or whatever calls that want your social security number, you feel like you did something wrong and now you have to give them your social security number. So, um, I don't know. This is just a way of looking at it. So what was taken? A lot of people want to know what information was taken from them, and you probably already watched some of the other videos on it, but credit scores were taken, balances were taken, uh, zip codes, email addresses, social security numbers, bank account numbers. These are just things that were taken, and, and these are big things that are taken, especially social security and bank account numbers. You don't want that information in the wrong hands. I will never, ever show anyone my bank account numbers I don't know why I'm saying this, but I just won't do it and you shouldn't do it either. So like I said, the hack affected 100 million people in the United States, 6 million in Canada. Um, they got 140,000 social security numbers, 80,000 bank account numbers. So that's a significant amount. Now, they said they didn't do any any fraudulent activity on these accounts with these social security numbers, but... You, you never know. It's so early in, in the game, really. Um, they have these numbers and it's not under control. That's the, that's the issue. So now I'm not really sure of the hacker, but I guess I can check that information out to see, um, if that person was caught. Okay. So I guess the Capital One hacker was caught. Um, now that's, that's something that's, that's great to know that, you know, the hacker was, was, um, detained and, uh, you know, everything is is good but i don't you don't know they could have quickly sold off information and um found a way to profit out of the deal and other people are actually gaining something out of the deal but you never know because yeah i'm not affected yet but maybe i will in the future um that's not a card that i use often but i will get um some sort of credit um update if something happens but you know, that's whatever. So they're basically saying that the people from 2005, any customers from 2005 all the way up to 2019 could be affected. Um, so that's just a large range and I'm in that range multiple times. So, um, and still I'm in that range cause my card's not closed. Um, but my card will, or my information will always be in their system. That's the thing. So, um, it just, it just upsets me so much. And I, I really wanted to make a video about this. It's nothing to where I'm just going to completely complain and say, oh, you know, I got the short end of the stick. I, I didn't. Um, it happens, um, especially in today's world where you have so much technology that, you know, things are bound to get hacked. Um, but whatever. Um, so things you could do. What can you do um, if you are affected or if you have been um, affected or if you feel like you're affected? So the first thing that you need to do is check all of your accounts. Make sure you check like Credit Karma, check all of your credit, run a credit report, do all this stuff and make sure that your account has not been affected right now. Um, and that's something that can really benefit you just to know that you're in the clear for now. Um, another thing you need to do is know the difference between a freeze and a lock. You can freeze your account. You can also lock your account. A freeze means that a consumer cannot take out a new loan or a credit card without unfreezing the report first. Locking, on the other hand, which offers the same protection as a freeze, but typically costs a monthly fee. So t I, it's not really, it's not really a, a difference at all, but you can basically say that someone's going to try and use um, your social security number, but your credit is frozen. So you could do that, freeze it, lock it, do whatever you want, pay a monthly fee and feel like it's more secure. Usually when you pay something, I always feel like it's better. That's, I guess that's sort of a placebo effect, but whatever. Um, also sign up for additional fraud protection and that's some, yeah, I'm saying fraud, not frog, fraud, frog, fraud. Um, sign up for additional fraud protection. This really helps you out. Um, obviously you're going to have to pay a fee, um, most of the time, um, unless you can hack your way into not paying a fee. Um, no, seriously, um, make sure you sign up for additional fraud protection. Um, and if you're in that 2005 all the way to 2019, uh, range, this will help you out. Um, next you need to know the difference between a hack and a breach. I don't need to know, I don't know why you need to know the difference. Um, 
but you should know the difference. Um, not when your credit is affected or if you feel like your credit is affected. I really don't know why this is truly in there. This was just on the article. But know the difference between a hack and a breach. A breach is when uh, data is unintentionally left unsecure and vulnerable to hack. A hack specifically refers to the activities of cyber attackers who purposely compromise IT infrastructure to steal information. So know the difference between a breach and a hack, um, but either way, try and freeze your account. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I guess I really don't want to freeze my credit, but I guess I should because I'm not going to be opening up any new credit cards right now. But since I am in that range, I don't really want to be affected. Um, so if you are in this range, go ahead and do that. Um, there's easy ways of doing that. But yeah, hopefully... Um, you're not affected. Hopefully everybody's, you know, clear and, you know, you can go on about your day because I don't want to see anybody go through that situation. There's a lot of people that go through, you know, identity theft and all these types of things on, you know, a uh, daily basis, weekly basis, and they just can't really shake it. So it's the toughest thing to shake. So, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this gave you some sort of insight. Um, if you did enjoy it, make sure you hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. And remember that I'm doing a giveaway of two Amazon gift cards when I hit my 2000 subscriber mark. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. But I'm going to have to get out of here. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.